thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, for graciously allowing me to make my maiden speech in this really important debate. I am deeply honoured to be standing here in this chamber as the new Member of Parliament for Tooting. Yeah. When I think about this chamber's long and proud history, about the women and men who have sat here before me and all they have achieved, I feel humbled. Clement Attlee, Nye Bevin, and very recently Joe Cox, but to name a few. I am also reminded of the vast responsibilities that we in this chamber are entrusted with and over the coming years and the magnitude of what we must now achieve for our country. I would like to talk a little bit about this task and about the mindset with which we should approach it. But first of all, I would like to talk about where I come from, tooting. It's hard for me to adequately express my gratitude to the people of Tooting for putting their trust in me. During my campaign, I said I would be a passionate, energetic and tireless representative for absolutely everyone in my constituency. And it is with that promise that I intend to serve. <laughs> Just two months ago, I was working day and night on our NHS front line in a and &E as an emergency doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I find myself wandering the corridors of Westminster, grappling with vast piles of dry booklets and mistaking members' offices for lady members' rooms. <laughs> <laughs> it has happened. <laughs> but it was a piece of good news that set me on the journey that brings me here today. And that was the election of our new Mayor of London, my yeah. good friend, yeah. Sadiq Khan, yeah. with the largest personal mandate in British political history. Yeah. 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 From the first time I met Sadiq, it was clear to me he was destined for greatness. When I became a councillor, he took the time to offer me support and guidance as he remembered well what it was like to suddenly find yourself holding the responsibilities of elected office. Sadiq spent 11 years working tirelessly for the people of Tooting. His commitment to equality, justice and inclusivity is inspirational. Whether he is celebrating International Women's Day year after year, breaking bread with every religious community or talking to children about how they can achieve no matter what their background, Sadiq's interactions are always warm and very welcoming. He truly believes in the power of people and communities and has shown that throughout his time representing Tooting and now the great City of London. He has made improving the environment a top priority in City Hall and has already started tackling the important issue of air quality in London. This debate gives us an opportunity again to see what a difference we can make in the House when we get legislation right. Legislation like the Clean Air Act of 1956 passed 60 years ago following the London smogs of the 1950s. I will endeavour to build upon Sadiq's fine legacy, standing tall for all of Tooting. Yeah. Sadiq's shoes are big to fill, but then I have the benefit of much higher heels to help. Yeah. <laughs> <Girl power>. <laughs> <laughs> we share a lot in our histories and our characters, Madam Deputy Speaker. Our surname, a love of football, a keen interest in boxing. Perhaps most importantly, Sadiq and I are children of Tooting, now choosing to raise our families on the very streets where we grew up. Yeah. We have one important difference though. My dad was not a bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> However, my mum did work in a local petrol station and who knows, perhaps Sadiq's father even filled up his bus there. <laughs> As a tooting girl through and through, I never like it when people say tooting is becoming a fantastic place to live. Anyone who's lived there as long as I have known it has known it's always been great. The wonderful green open spaces of tooting and Wandsworth Commons, the iconic tooting market and the Lido open for residents of tooting to swim outdoors for 110 years. There has always been a rich tapestry of communities living harmoniously alongside one another. And that unity should be celebrated, and I will defend it with every fibre of my being. Yeah. Yeah. That unity is woven into me, an essential part of who I am. When people ask me where I'm from, I say, I'm half Polish, half Pakistani, raised in England, married a Welshman, <laughs> and I'm 100% tooting. <laughs> there is a serious point in this, though. What binds us together? In Tooting and across the country, it's a sense of common purpose.
The selflessness that drives community groups and charities binds us together. Tooting's many local businesses, traditional and modern, not only fuel our thriving economy, but bind us together. St George's Hospital and our NHS, where everyone is treated with equal concern, based not on their race or religion, but their, on their need, binds us together. In these fragile times, we should never forget the charities, businesses and proud national institutions are not only important because they provide us a service or because they grow our economy, but because they bind us together as local residents, as citizens and as human beings too. So Madam Deputy Speaker, why am I here now? Well, life wasn't easy growing up, but I always had the bedrock that was the love and support of my mum, Maria. Even in the face of adversity, she was on her own, a single mum, but like a small army, <laughs> showering my brother and me with praise, providing a palpable sense of possibility. She gave me hope. She showed my brother and I that even people from our background can achieve anything with hard work and determination. Yeah. She instilled in me a deep-rooted determination to help others who have seen hardship and who fight for social justice. But I'm also here because of labour. My dream of becoming a doctor became a reality, not only through my own hard work and support from my family, but because a Labour government made it financially possible for me to access a world-class medical school Amen. at Cambridge. That is one reason why my ambition will always be for Labour to win power, not just to sit on these opposition benches. Yeah. I've served in an ice cream shop, I've fried eggs at a hotel, I've aided patients, but my proudest job, Madam Deputy Speaker, is being a wife and a mother. My heart bursts with the love I have for my husband Tudor and my two young daughters, Anaya, aged three, and Layla, aged just one. They are an immense source of strength for me and will continue to be so over the coming years. And we must now all look to those coming years. They will be turbulent, they will be challenging, and in them, history will be made. This House will be responsible for shaping Britain's future in the 21st century by guiding, overseeing, and providing accountability for the most important negotiations our country has seen for decades. In that period, important and defining questions will be asked about who we are as a nation and who we want to be, about the legacy we will leave the next generation and the generations after that, about the relationships we want to have with our friends and allies across the whole world. Britain has always been an outward-looking country, one that doesn't shy away from the challenges that face us all. My experience as a doctor and internationally all over the world has taught me a lot about those challenges. I have lived and worked in squalid refugee camps, pulled dead bodies out of flood water, watched children suffer as victims of war. I have witnessed aching, aching suffering. My commitment is to be a voice for those who have none, to find hope for those who have lost it, to build strength for those who are weak. Regardless of race, of ethnicity, of socioeconomic status, we all bleed, we all grieve, and we all feel pain. The sound of a parent losing a child, Madam Deputy Speaker, is an international language. It is tragically a sound that is increasingly common in our un unstable world. We live in a time of insecurity and change without parallel in recent history. <laughs> Europe is in flux. The Middle East is in crisis. The axis of global power is shifting. The old certainties no longer seem so certain. It's all too easy to write off calls for international social justice as irrelevant when we ourselves live in such difficult and uncertain times. We have so much to do to sort out our own country. Why should we be thinking about responsibilities overseas? That is to misunderstand what social justice is about. Amen. It's not simply a goal to be ranked and prioritised in relation to other goals. It's about how we think. It's about who we are. It applies to everything we do, whether protecting our NHS in the UK, protecting workers' rights in our negotiations with the EU, or working to seek peace in Syria and Yemen. Everywhere I look, there is work to do. Here at home, I pledge to bring my years of experience in and deep commitment to our NHS in order to stand up for it. Yeah, yeah. I could not be prouder of my NHS colleagues 
at St George's Hospital and elsewhere who work day and night with little thanks for the work they do. Anyone who has worked in the NHS, indeed anyone who has worked in any of our vital emergency services, knows well the feeling of leaving behind the comfort of home and family day after day, night after night, selflessly to work gruelling hours in difficult circumstances, serving the communities they love without complaint. I will work to protect them from the attacks they are under. Yeah. Our NHS staff, they see, we see, work as a vocation, not as a job. Mm. This is why, Madam Deputy Speaker, they've been so damaged by the recent mishandling of the junior doctor's contract yeah. and why nurses are so distraught when they see their bursaries axed. Yeah. Yeah. It is morally reprehensible that student nurses are forced to seek food banks or that women in medicine are penalised for having children. Yeah. 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 I have already asked two, two questions in my short time in this House, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I'm afraid I shall not stop asking questions until I get satisfactory answers. <laughs> Honourable Members, in these times, who knows how long I may be sitting here? <laughs> <laughs> what I do know and what I can tell you is that I'm going to make every single minute, every single day count for the people of Tooting and for Great Britain and the United yeah. Kingdom. Thank you. Geraint yeah. Davis. Well, what an absolutely uh, fantastic, uh, brilliant maiden speech we've just heard from the member for Tooting. I have served in this house.